So welcome and thanks for tuning in. In this session, we're gonna look at some of the opportunities for developers like yourselves to build new and exciting experiences for your users that also happen to use Google Workspace. Obviously, the point of this slide is a little bit tongue in cheek. Of course, you don't need an introduction to Google Workspace. You're here at IO checking out content. You definitely know what Workspace is. Even if you don't use it in your daily business, you probably have a good idea as you use a solution, kind of like it for your own personal productivity. But what I do want you to do is think differently about it. Just the fact that you joined the session is a first great start. Uh, but most folks, as you know, they, they know Workspace out of this, at this out of the box business productivity solution. It's a suite that just works for users. But for developers who really want to engage their users who use Workspace, it can be a whole lot more than just an out of the box solution. Where it starts, and ends, frankly, is with the user. If you think back to when Google was first formed, we established our philosophy of the, of the 10 things that we know to be true. And number one was, and still is, that the focus on the user and all else will follow mantra is true. It's a key tenet that we use here with the Google Workspace team today. Keep users productive, keep them engaged, keep them focused on getting things done, and they'll keep coming back to your solution and recommending it to others. When you think about workspace user experience, it revolves around a couple of key principles, uh, content, context, interactions, and workflows. Well, content's kind of obvious. These are the things that users work on or with inside of workspace. These are the things that users use all day long to get their job done or do their tasks uh, that they need to do uh, to be about their business. Context, is how they use those items relevant to the tasks they're trying to do, to the work they're trying to perform. So for example, I may get an email, which is content, uh, from a customer requesting something that has some specific context. That context, who the customer is, what are they asking for, what do I need to do with this email? That's the important piece that takes us to the next step, interactions. Interactions are, what do you do with that content? What am I supposed to do? How do I respond to the user of that email, for example, to that customer? Do I have to look up something first? Do I have to get help from a colleague? Do I actually engage an application like yours to do something, to create an action, or to carry out a workflow process to get it done? And that's where workflow comes in. It actually wraps all those things up together, and it's really the experience of users as they move through their daily lives using Workspace. The neat thing about Google Workspace as a platform is all these components are available for you to create your own custom solutions and make these experience for the users even better. As a developer, think of Google Workspace as a development platform. Now, of course, it's not a traditional development platform in the sense that you, you build full stack applications from start to finish and you've got all the tooling and all the infrastructure that you need. It's still at its heart a business productivity suite for both consumers and for businesses. But with it, you can integrate your own solutions into it. You can leverage its user experiences, its content, its workflows, add new features to it, and take advantage of all of those pieces that make up Workspace to better and enrich your user experience with your applications. What I like to do sometimes is break up Workspace into its pieces and think about it from a developer standpoint. So first and foremost, the number one building block that you can use is all the content and data stored within the platform, like you know, documents, emails, you know, stuff in Drive, uh, even chats, people contacts, all these type of things that you can access or you can even create from your own solution. These are the beginning building blocks. Building on top of that, we offer a set of tools and workflows that as a developer you can build on. Almost every area within Workspace is available through exposed APIs. There's a very extensive list that covers the majority of the Workspace stack. Workspace APIs also offers its own Java-based scripting language called AppScript, which hopefully you've heard of as well too. This makes it super simple to reach all those APIs. It's a combination of those tools, the frameworks, the UIs, our, our APIs, that allow you to create a really rich user experience, really shaping the way your apps can reach in and engage with folks inside the platform. And then wrapping up the platform, rounding it out, we have Google Workspace Marketplace. It's a publishing mechanism for solutions to be discovered, uh, to be deployed by both consumers and businesses. Again, if you think about the pieces and the opportunity here, yeah, Google Workspace really is a development platform of sorts and something you can take advantage of with your solutions. 
let's talk about some of the key components in more detail. I wanna get you excited about what you can build with some of these frameworks and show you what they can do. So the first one let's start off with is probably the most popular integration method that you'll see for developers like yourselves, and that's add-ons. Add-ons, as the name implies, allows you to create new capabilities to Google Workspace. For me, there's really two great values that add-ons offer. The first one is one a lot of folks as developers ask for. I'd love to have my application, my solution, side by side in a window where users and workspace are working. But second and, and more important than just giving you real estate is we allow you to grab that important context of the way the user is working. Help them really improve the experience of what they're working on by offering them something to do that's relevant, timely, and compelling and easy to include our solutions and our uh, tools with yours at the same time. So that's the, really the beauty of add-on is blending the greatness of our apps and your apps. The next thing we offer is, again, this beautiful opportunity to have real estate, to have a window right inside the Google Workspace experience. And so the homepage, so to speak, like a web page, but this way inside a workspace, allows users to load your add-on. And as a developer, you have an opportunity to create your own UI presence inside a workspace. With this homepage, you can have generic functionality um, that is common to your solution, or you can have instructions on how it works, or, or whatever you want to put in there that simply makes this experience richer. And then the neat thing is this homepage can be displayed across all the different workspace apps that you hook your add-ons up to. So in this case, you can see we're sitting inside of uh, Gmail with a tasks add-on, but if I was to click over to calendar, notice that it's similar. I can see all my tasks, but it's slightly different because it's now in calendar and that's the way I intended it. I can change some of those nuances to make it more calendar centric. And of course, here it is working in Drive. So again, I can have that consistent home page, or I could adapt it per app based upon what the use case is. So the beauty here though is as a developer, you only need to write and deploy one add-on, one code base, and it can light up across all the different workspace apps like Gmail, Calendar, Drive, and all the editors, docs, sheets, and slides. So you write once, deploy once, and your application shows up everywhere. But again, working within context of the way that user is working and the app that it's being hosted in. If you look at this scenario, again, we're back in Gmail, but notice this case, when I open up the add-on, it's an issue tracker add-on, right? For handling customer requests and bugs and things like that. And notice again, it's automatically opened up based on the context of the email received so the user didn't have to do anything. And the way it works is the add-on was able to infer uh, the context that this is in fact an issue from a customer because it has a safe scope access to the email. And then in the logic, it can grab that item out of either the subject or the body of the email, automatically go off, look at that information of the customer issue, display it in the side panel right in context without the user doing anything. And now you can also see that the user can do things like change the priority or reassign this task. You know, common actions that make sense, again, without having to switch tabs, change focus, get distracted or get lost along the way. Just do things right in line the way it works. So super neat. As I mentioned, add-ons can run differently in different workspace apps. So in this case, you can see here, I've got Gmail showing once again, and Gmail has some really neat features. Like for example, I can manage compose time or send time actions on emails uh, in context inside of Gmail. So say for example, I wanna help somebody author an email at compose time. I can provide them with boilerplate text or add a footer or check language or um, add grammar, whatever I wanna do automatically for them to make email creation faster, easier, and along my company's standards. Just a quick note, the add-on you create for these workspace desktop apps can also work in mobile scenarios for some of the apps like Gmail and Calendar for conferencing scenarios. So again, write one add-on and know that that add-on can run mobile as well as on the desktop, helping you reach a lot more users. We also offer now a cards framework for designing the UIs and capturing the events inside the side panel. So you can see the cards framework allows you to assemble a full set of different widgets, things like sections, text boxes, date pickers, check boxes, radio buttons, all the things you see here on the slide, really allowing you to make a rich, full comprehensive UI, but also with nice material design and very consistent, very predictable, so users can use your experience and recognize it immediately. So a nice way to build it. 
So if you're going to build an add-on, please check out the link here on the bottom of this slide. This is a must-have to make this a seamless, easy way to go. A great tool to have. Definitely check this one out. We've recently introduced something called alternate runtimes. And this, along with the new Add-ons Cloud API, will allow you to use the tools, the language, the infrastructure of your own choice. That means whatever your dev stack is, all you have to do is return JSON objects from your endpoints uh, to render cards in the side panel of the add-ons and, and to handle the actions. And you can forego using App Script at all and do this with your own tools. So super neat, super easy, and hopefully that will encourage more folks to build add-ons going forward. So that's a quick look at add-ons. Let me do a fast pivot to Google chatbots. Chatbots, or kind of chat apps as we like to refer to them internally, allow you to interject your applications into user conversations inside of Google Chat. This is super neat because you think about it, as more and more teams adopt chat as a real-time communication method, chatbots are a great way to bring automation, actions, and even deliver asynchronous alerts right into the conversation teams are having based upon the context of those conversations. So you can build capabilities in your solution that reduce friction. This allows users to stay in the moment, to stay in the middle of their conversations, all the while they're directly interacting with your solutions and your backends. Chatbots are pretty simple to use. Uh, all you have to do is at mention one to invite it to a conversation. Uh, you can use it in a direct message or in a team room, whichever way you want to uh, make them enabled as a, as a developer. The bot will then be able to immediately respond to commands or wait for more commands and take commands on. So one of the neat things about chatbots is they are part of the conversation. So they can support things like natural language commands so users don't have to know cryptic commands to use them, making them really easy. And then as a developer, on the back end, you can supply the intelligence to take that language and do something interesting with it. To build these bots, we've also made it a lot easier uh, and also easier to use. Uh, for example, we recently added something called slash commands. This enables you, the developer, to register and advertise specific commands for your bot that helps users understand some of your bot's features, some of the important ones you'll want to promote. All a user has to do is type slash inside of a room or a DM. A bot's slash commands will appear in a pop-up. or will also offer them a little description of what each command does, making it simple for users to learn what your bot does, allowing them to engage it real easy, and making a great point of entry to get things done. Building bots. So building bots is pretty similar to how you would build add-ons. We have a framework for chatbots that will help you manage the events, uh, help you manage the interaction with the chat rooms and the messages, and also allow you to respond in things like simple text, where you can just respond to text back to the users or to an individual. Or you can use our card framework markup language to build more creative and more interactive UIs. And it's very similar to what we saw in the last example with add-ons. In fact, we've recently updated the UI paradigm a little better. We're in the process of rolling out dialogues for chatbots. Dialogues allow you to capture inputs in a way from users that are more fastable, more consistent, and more reliable. Again, as I mentioned, chatbots are really similar to add-ons on how you build them. So you start with cards and the card builder tool for shaping your UI elements. You can use App Script once again, or you can use your own HTTPS endpoints and let your own backend to build out the actions, the events, and the responses. You can use PubSub if you want to use notifications in your chatbots, or you can use things like Dialogflow for natural conversation bots. All right, so now hopefully you are inspired and excited by what you saw. Got a couple of great resources to get you on your journey to building solutions. If you don't remember any of them here, simply pick out that first one, developers.google.com slash workspace. It'll help you find all the other ones, uh, but some great resources to jump into all the way. Again, thank you so much for attending. My name is Charles. You can DM me on Twitter at Chaz Maxson. I'd love to hear what you're building. I'd love to see the results. If you have any questions, ping me. Thanks so much, and I'll see you building on Workspace.